here is the one distal femur is the poor site for integrated nailing with two distal parallel screws and hold of the nail is distal fragment is poor. And you can see the CT scan. This is the nail and this is an expanding cavity. You can see where the nail is. Nail is reasonable fitting here, but here it is floating. And you can see the nail is floating here. There is no hold at all of the nail. So I feel option in such junctural fracture to me is distal femur nail. Main thing is the distal femur nail. It is the hold and the subchondrial bone of the distal femur. And one, two, three screws or four screws now, whatever are really. And you can see it as a, to me, the most important is it has a big hold here. It's not floating in the cavity. It is in thick bone distal femur. And here there is only one spiral blade and screw. And this fracture is beautifully held up. So this is, I feel, is the biggest and the best fixation, which is announced by two, three screws or a spiral blade. And most important is, this is fixed in the subcondral bone. Now here was the fracture. This was one senior orthopedic surgeon's cousin. He was in Bombay. I did this nailing. When I did this, because it was an upper one, it was here, junction fracture. But it was a community fracture like this. I didn't want to take a chance. Possibly it may have held up, cannot have held up only with nailing, but a primary nailing and grafting and the whole thing held up in due course of time. So here it is, the fracture, fracture one month, and even these three screws, this is what has been recommended, that you can do these three screws, it is a better, it is a better option. And I agree, it is much better, three or four screws. But this nail, if it can go subchondral, it would be a better option. Multiple screw in multiple directions, push the nail subchondral, it thought to be better. Integrate with one or two screw, it is not enough. That is the one which is completely off. And this one also went into non-union ultimately, and we had to three two. Here is the fracture, which you can see non-union and uh, supplementary nail and a medial graft. And then it has healed up completely. And I have, I have removed the implant also, as you can see here. Now, why I'm doing this medial plating is, this is the way I do the medial plating. I open up, in, seeing in the CM on the bone, just on the medial side. Open it up, cut the muscles, and still remain on the anterior medial side. Shingle anterior medial, posterior medial, medial, and then put the graft there, and then put in a plate. You people recommend integrate multi axial multi screws in digital end. If integrate then this may be a better option, not necessarily the best. And as I told you in these cases. Now, here, as you can see, it's 10 years, three operations. I do not know why a surgeon wants to continue with this renailing, renailing, renailing with dynamization over here. This is a poor construct. All what you need to do, you do this and then the four. This is a doctor, uh, whole childhood, osteomyelitis, right fever, multiple surgeries between the age of 5 and 17, last in 82, age just low, ill afterwards, normal activity, no sure whether the fall first or the fracture first. Now here was that fracture. This is how it was there. This was old vascular injury. It has nothing to do with it. I took up this fracture, put in a plate, Took out the graph from anterior, from the uh, anterior part, sorry, proximal part of the tibia. Put in the graph there on the medial side. And then you can see here, this is what is the thing which has been done. And in due course of time, in seven years, this is the one which has held up. Now, this was also Dr. Pune Sajdev Delhi, husband of an orthopedic surgeon. Again, a fracture. Again, the same thing, anti-grade nail. This was a segmental fracture, so it's perfectly all right. But this could have been supplemented with the plate primarily. This ended up, this proximal fragment held up, distal fragment did heal up. So ultimately, we had to do this. 
and then the factory hit up. So here is the one, this is the Maharani of one of the state. Obviously, the joint replacement surgeon had done the joint. So when they got this fracture, he went up from anteriorly and he did his nail. As you can see here, this is the poor construction. And you can see what happened. Because of the mobility, this went into hypertrophic non -union. So I went down. I used the same bone graft. Did you take it out? Did the plating on the lateral side? And this thing is completely hit up. On day one, if we had done this nailing and put in this plate, because this is a poor construction, this patient would have gone through a perfectly normal life and nothing would have happened. All these things would not have been able to do. Day one, the residual plate would have saved this Mara. Now we come to lower one third femur. It occurs due to mix of principle. Why non-union occurs and how we to handle it? Lower one third. I feel two plates have given maximum complication today. One is this distal femur plate, because this distal femur plate, and obviously the with this distal femur plate, people have not understood the principles of distal femur plate. It occurs due to mix of principles. Communicated fractures, mobile immobilized, stabilized, not rigidly fixed with micro motion or a callous healing. Spiral fracture, leg and rigid fixation for a primary healing. As you can see here, it was it was one of my colleagues, post surgeon do this common error in treating this distal fracture. This is one of my colleagues, he treated this fracture. Communicated fracture, short plate. Most non unions can be avoided if long, minimum 11 to 12 old plates is used in a micro machine mode. Now, here you can see here again, such a fracture, you try to do this, it's, this is too bad a situation. It should never have been treated like this. What it should have been treated is four or five screws distally, mid post situation, don't touch this, and three or four alternate screws proximal. This is the way it has to be treated on day one. Never touch this fracture or oh, comminuted fracture and don't put this three, four screws. Now you can see here in such a comminuted fracture again, then three screws and three or four screws is all what you need. This is the fracture you can see this is John, John Mokopadhyay's case, comminuted fracture, this is one four and he has done this same way as of plating and the whole thing is held up in due course of time. So this is our MIPO plating should have been done and then the fracture held up. Medial void, what is the current thoughts? Now what happens is people feel that this fracture with this medial void, people have been doing it different, different things. In AOS 2016 opinions, predominantly long 11, 12, 13, 14 old plate. And this is what is to be done for the medial void. And alternate holes proximal. Double plating and a medial support in different forms not required in primary treatment. That is what is AO5. It is an Indian debate. Now here, this is the one which, as I mentioned, to do this mid plating, which I showed you. Minimum 11 or upper three screws, and this becomes all right. Even in 1975, we, we did this. This is the case which I had in 1975 and nothing was done. And you can see here, plate, plate, without touching this fragment and the whole thing is done. Or this fracture. Now, this is the one I showed you. My friend had done this, terminated fracture. Last two minutes, knowledge, long plate, 11 holes, it could have held up. So here it is. And now we went down and did the grafting because it didn't heal up, we did the grafting. Again, the biomechanics is not all right. It is not the, it is not the biology. The plate broke. This is the stage he, I had, I joined him to do the test. And we did the double plating and the medial grafting, double unequal plates, and this helps up. The double plating is very, very important. Now here you can see that this is the one surgeon had done this plate plate, which is a good operation. But I think it is a short plate plate. 
and he probably he had not entered into this faction, communicated faction. He could have held up. This is the one since it was a there was a good amount of it. I didn't want to do a medial play. I did the anterior play, and the thing held up. Now this is how I inherited. Surgeon did this like screw and then a micro motion mode. We did only two screws proximally. Here comes the leg screw. Leg screw, that means you need a region. It can be a micro motion mode where the movements are allowed. So this is what was done. And even this leg is not done. It's not done perfectly. There is no reduction between that. This leg is good, but this leg is not good. This leg is also all right. But he didn't really try to get this leg properly. And so this held up. This really broke down. And as you can see, it broke down at the same leg, which is not perfectly done. It broke down. Now, the only way was a long blade, bone graft medially, and the thing would become all right. But this also broke down. Because again, uh, again, this is not a good treatment for this fracture. In this sort of a fracture, either a double plate would have done, or the easiest is a distal femur nail. You do a distal femur nail, and this is such a good big bone which is there, <coughs> there is no need to do a plating here. As you can see, if you go proximally, there's a good bone there. You can just do a distal femur nail, you could have held up. Anyway, this is the best treatment, I think. I did the digital payment nail and things became perfectly all right. So significantly less periodic kind of formed in fractures, they will have the blocking plates and the inverted plates. Less callus was formed with stiff stainless steel in transfer and those with more old spin. Compared to the less stiff titanium transfer and those with empty or the other fracture can. This is a micro motion board. This is what you are. And these are all the reports which is. 21% non-union, 22% required second source union. These are the results of a distal femur plate. Locking plate for a distal femur, is there a problem with fracture healing? Safety full length publication in three abstracts were included. The rate of complications related to healing range from 0 to 32% in these studies. Implant failures occur late in 75% of the failures occurring in three months and 50% occurring even in six months. So six months, even if you think the fracture is held up, is not necessary. It can go away. Here is ample evidence that in some series, healing failure the delays have been relatively frequent. So this is the one now. Now my feeling, my gut feeling I am talking. I am not talking about now um, uh, the whole literature I told you very well. My gut feeling is this, if you do a long plate, may hit up very well. But if there is a gap medium, there is no gap here. There is a communication, but no gap. This sort of a fracture will heal up with a long plate. But if ever there was a gap here, that if the bone was crushed, I feel that is not a better time to fix it up with this uh, only one long plate. I would rather do if there is a gap. On day one, I'll do a second plate and put in a bone graft. Now, this gap is what I'm talking about is in an elderly people, there may be a bone crushing which will occur. So that sort of a gap is not desirable to be fixed up only with this. So I do not want to argue even if you do a mid-core plating which has been desired, it may heal up in that situation. But chances of healing are lesser and less. So I think it's a, it's a very difficult situation to decide on day one what to do. Minimum you do is the four screws and at the 11, 12 or day, alternate screws. That would be the ideal situation. Any questions on this before we proceed further? Any questions? So, choice of plates for augmentation plating for tibial and femoral junction fracture. Which plate should be used for that? Sir, sir, this is Deshpande here. So, what is your indication for double plating? Is it a gap which you said? I did. Did I hear it correctly? Yeah, yeah, Deshpande. I am getting a gut feeling, which I cannot say it as a conviction, but if there is a gap, 
not a convolution, but if there is a gap medially, I would primarily do a double plating with the bone grafting. Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you, sir. I tell you Desh Pandey. All yes, sir. All of I want to add something. If yes, sir. I will uh, send a uh, whole series of intro pictures and the immediate and the follow up pictures around 65 osteoporotic, very low fracture. Hmm. Very rarely I will do a double plating primarily. So that I have done double plating, intraarticular, very low. So, and she has sailed through now, is almost six months. She's walking. It is united. Yeah. I, I do agree. In osteoporotic bones, low fractures, it is better to put two parallel unequal plates, as Tanna sir said, unequal. Yes, sir. I think to the people who are attending, I want to introduce Dr. V. N. Deshpande. He is a very Thank sweet you, sir. person in Nagar, and he had done the fellowship last time. And this time we offered that those who had attended last time, if they desire, they can come for this, uh, this second fellowship also. And one of the ardent Ardent, uh, I am one of his ardent admirers. In first time also, his attendance was 80-90%. And he has joined this also. I am sure he is far more experienced and he has been doing all these things which we are talking. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind words. We have been to Nagar. Some yes, sir. Back. We had a wonderful time there and sit very enthusiastic crowd in a small place which was Nagar. Now, here is the very prosthetic fracture. Now, this fracture is a good fracture above the plane of the femur and this is a long or good oblique fracture. If you do this, it will heal up very well and you can see the everything will heal up and the patient walks about with a good accident and all. But a fracture like this, now this fracture is below the flare of the femur prosthesis. Now, when you do this fracture, then a single plating is no, no. You can see they have done the single plating. And this has gone into non union Here is another case, single okay. plating. This has gone into non union This is not desirable. Because you see, this is one and this, this fracture is an oblique fracture like this. So when you do a single plating on the lateral side, the hold on the distal fragment is hardly any. So this is the one which I would say when you put a single plate here, the hold on the distal fragment is only this. So it is desirable that you have primary double, primary double plating into these fractures. So in this one, you convert it to a double plating and this will so a thicker fracture just on or below the flare of the femur, primary double plating is indicated. And I would strongly suggest if any doubt to a double plating, you will not be a loser. Here the surgeon had done alternate screws, but still this is not good enough. Because in the distal end, there was hardly any fixation. Now you can see here was the fracture, single plating, went into complete non union because there is no hold of the distal fracture. You can see these screws came out, they were in the fracture and there is no hold. So this is the one. Now I went down and did the double plating. And this is the reason I have been to a meeting, I think somewhere in Indore, nearby she was staying two hours away. So this is in the meetings on a chair. I have taken these uh, pictures. Now, can you appreciate one thing here? This is what was the pre-op picture. This is what was the post-op picture. This was all communicated. So I compressed it keeping the axis of the femur perfectly all right. After grafting, I did the distal femur plate. But here, because of the compression, this space increased. So I kept the provision of an insert. So this is a longer, thicker insert which was inserted. This was a thicker insert which was inserted. So you can see from here to here. And I could still get away with it without doing a revision of the knee. So when I was doing it, I had expected because this was the fracture which was preoperatively I felt there is this much, there must not be much of a bone there. And as you can see here, she was also 75 or something age group which was there. So this was the 
probably twice I have done this, but not very often. Now here is the other case. This is the fracture, comminuted fracture again, lower one third. Surgeon did one plate, which is not good enough. And you can see many screws. So this thing will happen. See at this primary osteoarthritis. When she come to me like this, I offered her and she agreed. So I did the total knee with the prosthesis, wrong prosthesis, holding up to fracture and a supplementary plate. There were lots of bone graft which was available here. So I put in all the bone graft there. And this was the very well, I, two problems were solved in the same way. <laughs> now here you see, I want to show this case. This is a oblique fracture. So I did the nailing. I did the nailing and I saw the, you can see the movement of that. Now I did the plating of the fibula. And you can see the still of the So I can, there is no point in hesitating. It could have held up, it may not have held up, I am not sure. So I, I added up. Another plate, long plate, three months, you can see, this is the one which is already there, three months it is gone, and now it is five months, perfectly walking about, moving about, healing up, it will heal up slowly, but she is walking about, moving about without any restriction. Here is the other patient, the same distal fibula, so I did the fibula, fibula plate, percutaneously I fixed up the tibia, I, I reduced the tibia. Showed in the plate percutaneously. I think this could have been probably just enough. There was no need for me to do anything. But in order to be absolutely sure, I added up this plate. Perfect healing is there, central nail, three screws, and everything. I added up this plate. Whether needed or not needed, I'm not sure. This is what it was. Added up the plate. This is how we. Recon no, plate is added in this case, sir. Recon plate, plate is added in this case. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a recon, reconstruction plate. Uh, it is a reconstruction plate. And it was done in a MIPO mode. So I yes. think that was, maybe this was an overkill. But as I say, I feel if anything can improve the chances of the patient, I mean, with this, they walk about on day one. As you can see, since it was an oblique fracture, I could have done the screws and all. I lack screws, but then I would have invaded. So this is how it was treated. Now, all these things, we are not showing you a standard treatment which is there. We are showing you whatever the small variations which each one of us do at times. This is to me, it was he, he was perfectly all right. He walked about on almost on day four or day five with partial weight bearing and now he's full weight bearing. The same thing is this patient also is full weight bearing. Now this patient is also full weight bearing. She came to me about two days back with the relatives and she has no issue at all. The radiology doesn't heal up. They are all both husband and wife doctors. But since she has no pain, there are healing signs are appearing. To me, I am not one concerned and this is held up. This is an overkill. I wouldn't suggest that this is the treatment. <laughs> probably it was held up and it was nailed with three screws distally. Probably it could have been just enough. I'm not sure. But still, since it was a fracture which was long or long or weak, I went ahead and did it. So long plate to avoid double plate nail in a non union fracture below flare of the femur, double plate. And this is what I feel should be done for these fractures. All the junctional fractures are a difficult fracture. And all the junctional fractures will probably have a slightly lesser chance of healing than the fracture is in the istma. So junctional fracture, femur junctional, upper and lower one third, tibia upper one, upper one third and lower, uh, lower to one third, all these fractures are potentially uh, slow healers. Heal, as I said, you can get up only with nailing. If in case it fails, you can do the thing. That would be the yes, if you want to be. But as I said, I personally believe in an overkill. 
convincingly that I had the smallest education. I do the overkill and I take the patient. Because to me, if the patient has a fractured TBI, doesn't tell her, that means he goes through four months, five months, and comes back for the second treatment with surgery. And then at the end of one year or so, maybe the second year. But all the second operation goes to the So that's the reason I feel this is a thing about an overkill, yes or no, to the individual system. Dr. Chambok, do you want to present anything? Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, actually, my question is related to our last lecture. Sir, the uh, stress fracture in the proximal tibia uh, in usually is virus deformity. They are usually present late around one to two months at interval. So, what is your opinion regarding uh, bone grafting in such case? Or what is your choice, choice of implant? Is there a, do a nailing or plate? You repeat, sorry, I, I got it. Uh, sir, the, uh, in virus deformity of the proximal tibia, uh, there is a stress fracture at the level of upper third junction. And they are usually present uh, late at the duration of one or two months. So, sir, what is your opinion regarding uh, bone grafting in such fracture or choice of implant? Better to do a nail or plate? Stress fracture in uh, so I think the proximal tibia. Last yes. page, Dr. Gadi Gunne mentioned about supra patellar nail would be a better option because you'd be able to get a good reduction. But in the okay. situation which you are describing, I will go with nail and a tape. And if okay. it has come to you late, you can uh, you you will not have a hundred percent reduction so easily done means it has come late. So you can do nail and a plate and a graph, but in primarily. Dr. Gadigun has beautifully suggested that primarily if you get a good reduction and a suprapatellar nail is, is very, 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 very possible to heal with the only primary. Dr. Okay. Chita, you want to add up something or you want to present anything? You are, you are muted. You are muted. I just joined. So distal femur non-union is something which I can present. Please, please. Yeah, just two minutes. Uh, by the time some discussion goes on, I'll just select the topic and uh, get it on the computer. Most certainly. Yeah, yeah. Negi, sir, by, by the time, if you have anything. It, you are it's a type of a. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not shy. Right? Asim, you are ready. You, you can present. You are muted. Asim, you are muted. Yeah, I am ready. I can share the screen. Yeah, you please carry on. Desh Pandey, you want to say something? Dr. Uh, next time, sir. Next time I'll come prepared. I'll be ready. Okay. This time, this time I'll be listener, sir. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My patient is a 40-year-old female who had a fall from stairs, sustained a close injury to ankle, no neurovascular deficit, that was her right state. So, uh, this was basically a presentation for uh, AO course. So, the, there are questions there. What will you do next? Uh, a close reduction as early as possible should be done. Reduce the joint and put the patient in a slab at least. Then, you have to classify this injury, so CT scan will be helpful. This was in AO classification 44C. It's a supra syndesmotic screw uh, injury, which is C. A is below the syndesmosis, and B is in Weber's classification at the level of syndesmosis. I think Dr. Tanna will talk about this in great detail later on. Uh, you have to plan the surgery meticulously. Decide your objective, how you are going to achieve it, get as much information as you can before you proceed with the surgery. And CT is almost mandatory to treat any intraarticular fracture. And yourself read all the images, just don't read the report from the radiologist. You should be able to read the 2D images, which are extremely important. You can see that there is a large postural uh, malleolar fragment there beside the fibular fracture and the medial malleolus. 
pay close attention to the soft tissue that can be a disaster and you may have to wait even 4 to 6 weeks at times but around 10 to 14 days wait, wait is common for most trimalleolar fractures i don't need a spanning external fixator for ankle injuries most of the time almost always it's a slab elevation and the swelling reduces usually they are operated around day 10 to 12 or 14 At times, something like this, as shown here, may require a spanning X fix because you may have to wait even four to six weeks for the soft tissue to improve. And then you plan your surgery. Study the CT scan carefully. I do them mostly in the spinal anesthesia. Tunica is high on the thigh. Proppy lateral is my favorite position. Though you can do them in the prone position, as shown on the left side, but this is what I prefer and I got my reasons for that. My blocks are arranged such that ankle can be moved in plantar flexion and dorsal flexion or if I want, I can put this ankle anteriorly. Assistant in the front can internally rotate the legs so surgeon gets access to the posterior aspect of the knee, uh, ankle very easily. And later on, once I have finished the posterior mellulus and the lateral mellulus, I can easily turn the patient supine for fixing medial mellulus. This is a 3-liter saline bottle which we keep below the tunique. It helps immensely in scrubbing the patient and getting the patient wet. And you can remove it after wrapping. First, I take posterior lateral approach and fix the posterior mellulus and the lateral mellulus and then I turn the patient supine after closing the posterior wound, go to the medial mellus by anteromedial approach. You may require AO distractor if it's an old injury, not this particular patient, it was a, some other patient. We will see the sequence of reduction and how I achieve the fixation. Keep a variety of Luhar chal there, distal radius plates, recon plates, 2.4 and headless compression spoon, all those things may be required on table. This is my incision, about 12 to 15 centimeter incision between tendo achilles and the posterior border of the fibula. They are marked there and shown. That's my lateral mellulus. This is my incision and this is the border of the tendo achilles. While taking the skin incision, be careful. The uh, uh, sural nerve is not very deep. It may be just beneath the subcutaneous tissue. Don't damage sural nerve. It's usually accompanied by short saphenous vein in the distal part here. Incise deep fascia and line and then gently retract your peroni anteriorly. This is the peroni which have been retracted by a right angle retractor. This is my FHL which is peeled off from the posterior aspect of the lower end of the tibia. You can just use your fingers to elevate it from the posterior aspect of the ankle. And whole posterior mellus is exposed there. This is the lateral mellulus, this is the posterior mellulus and you can see the shiny structure in between. This is posterior PITFL, posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. Please do not cut it. My tip of the periostrum is at the superior margin of the posterior mellulus. Previously, they used to teach us that you should dorsiflex the ankle, but now the thinking is that you should plantar flex and pull the ankle anteriorly to reduce this uh, posterior mellulus in its place. As we reduce the volar barton fracture and check the reduction at the metaphysial level, here also, an assistant is pulling the ankle in plantar flexion and anteriorly. Periostem is just nudging it inferiorly so that I can see my reduction on this metaphysial area here. Spikes are matching or not. And simultaneously, I reduce the lateral mellulus also and hold it with only towel clips. Please do not put any plate on the fibula because then imaging the posterior mellulus will be extremely difficult. But yes, you have to reduce the fibula and clamp it and maybe even fix it with temporary K wires, which probably I have done in this case. Then you go to the posterior mellulus and fix it with K wires. That's the step. This is particular step is done under image intensifier because patient is in lateral position. It's very easy to image the ankle for this view. My K wire starts about five to six millimeters, seven millimeters above the articular surface and is perpendicular to the fracture plane. One K wire strategically placed and then 
I slide my 3.5 LCP of distal radius over this K wire, over the first K wire which I have passed here. Then this clamp is achieving the interfragmentary compression. First screw is the metaphysial screw, which is put 3.5 cortical screw, which is put at the apex of the osseum annulus. And this completes the job of anti glide plate. This is buttressing it here. And then the K wires are subsequently replaced. One with the interfrag screw, if you want, you can replace with a leg screw. And the second K wire at this level is replaced with a locking screw most of the time. Then you go to the fibula, replace the K wire in the uh, fibula is almost reduced here. You can see here, and the fibula was kept reduced with a K wire. So this K wire and the fibula reduction has been just replaced with a 2.7 leg screw, and then there is a long posterior fibular plate. This posterior plating has got many advantages. You can pass 2.7 leg screws through the plate if fracture anatomy allows you. You get larger, longer screws, 24 to 30 millimeter almost. They are all bicortical, even in a small distal fragment. And there is no risk of entering the ankle joint. There is reduced implant prominence and reduced frequency of removal of implant. I don't remember. I have removed hardware in any one of my ankles in the last 20 years. Hardly anything except maybe patient came with some infection or other issues. But I, due to mechanical reasons, I have not removed. Then I release my tunicate, close my wound, osseo wound, and turn the patient supine, go to the medial mellus. Then doing the medial mellus by intermedial approach, please expose this corner of the joint. Be aware of medial platform comminution or depression in this area, which you may have to elevate. And if there is significant depression, you may have to put some packing material there, either a bone graft or a chronos, and then close the medial mellus. In this patient, we did a tension vent for that. Having done all that, every ankle fixation, you have to check the syndesmotic stability and stability of your fixation in coronal, sagittal, and by giving external rotation stress. Every ankle which has been fixed should be stressed in three planes, and you should be satisfied that it's not subluxating anteriorly or it's not opening on the medial side when you give an external rotation uh, stress. Otherwise, having done all this also, you may have to put syndesmotic screw. Slab is hardly for one or two days, three days till the wound settles down. Elevation, then they are allowed early range of motion, but no weight bearing is allowed till almost 12 weeks. That's two months. This is eight months. And here we are at four years follow up, and she is absolutely normal. Full range of motion, no arthritic changes, no pain. Thank you. This is Bartonistic classification. If it's in extra incisural, if it's not involving the incisura, then only you may not fix the posterior mellus. Otherwise, most posterior mellus fracture will have consequences regarding stability and will require fixation. And something like this, which is going right across to the medial mellus, will probably require a dual approach, posterolateral as well as a posteromedial. Thank you, sir. Any questions to Negi, sir? That was an interesting case. Very nice and very useful presentation, uh, Dr. Negi. Thank you, sir. Any questions? If, uh, are, uh, if I ask this question, what is the sequence of uh, fixation you are following? Anybody can answer. It was a very heated debate last time. People wanted to fix the lateral mellulus and the first, posterior. First, you temporarily reduce lateral mellulus, temporarily reduce, then posterior mellulus uh, fixation, then lateral mellulus technical fixation. I think that's yeah. absolutely right. Perfect. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the logic is? See the exact uh, posterior mellulus radiographically. Because yes, after sir. putting that definitive fixation, yes, the profile of posterior malleolus visualization in the imaging becomes much, much easier. Yes. You can easily see it. You can do a 30 degree external rotation and see it. You can have multiple views and see it. That is absolutely right. Perfect. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आज ऑन एनी ऑकेजन डिड यू फाइंड दिडियल मैलोलियस इज नॉट रिड्यूस इवन आफ्टर फिक्सिंग द पोस्टीरियर मैलोलियस एंड So in that case, show you a case, did you open case the medial manuals? No, no, no. I will show you a patient where I to I tried to go by the same approach which I showed just now. Yes. But the reduction was not hundred percent. It was not to my satisfaction. I took Correct. a medial approach, exposed the. That was a Barton effect type three, Ramel type three, where the that posterior malleolar fragment was in continuity with the medial one. So I had to reduce the medial one. There is a complete PPT with a long term follow up, almost a year, more than a year now. Oh. So uh, we can see those images that look. This is not looking good. I went posterior medially. Mm -hmm. You see the void there that there is a rotational element and uh, 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 everything fell in place. And first, the posterior posterior medial plate was put. So there is a case with documentation and a follow. I will show you. Very yeah, good question. Yeah. yeah. And about that stressing part also, I have got a case which has been seen by even uh, uh, Dr. Anish in US and Rajiv Shah Sahab and uh, Dhin Dayal and, and Tanna Sahab and Chandak Sahab. Everybody has seen. Having fixed everything, the ankle was almost setting anteriorly. So you must stress it and check. Uh, if I had not checked it, I would have been doomed. It has become all right. Yeah. I think if I can interrupt. Yeah. The case which is not being discussed just now. Okay. When you talk about it, hypothetical case. I have a case like this and all. It is not enough educated. So you show your case, and then it will be much more easier for us. It, 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 I know both, both 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 the people are there. Maybe yeah. if it may be, and I think Dr. Chandok once he finishes, you you please yeah. as a stand. Okay. okay, I'll I'll keep as a stand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Chandok. Yes, sir. Sorry, there were there were a few chats here. Choice of plate for augmentation plate for TV and femur. Junction non-union. I think a 4.5 plate uh, narrow density for a femur should be all right, unless a distal femur, unless a distal femur plate if you use it. In a tibia, 3.5 is going to be good enough. When to add a medial plate? Now, if you another question is, as I told you, the medial plate is optional when you find. There is a long oblique fracture, and the nailing itself may not be able to stabilize it even with three screws. Then there may be an additional plate which you can put it on medial side. This is optional. This is an overkill, but still it will not harm the patient. Third question is: Will those elastic nails medially will work if the gap present? This is in a distal femur of the Pulkarni in Miraj. They have been trying it out. Up till now, they have not come out with the positive response all the time. They feel it is uh, one of the ways in which you can help it. So it is still. I don't think anybody can really opine very dogmatically or even confidently about it. And the last is in junctional lower one third tibia fracture. Plating is ideal or medial or the lateral surface besides the nail. If you put the nail. Probably the plating on the medial thing, which is not any 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 disturbance of the soft tissue, that may be a better option. Okay, Doctor Chandok. Yeah, if yeah. Add something, which please add. Otherwise, please carry on. Yeah, I'll just share this.
So I hope you are all able to see the screen. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> So I'm presenting supracondylar and distal third femur non-union, various modalities of treatment and what would be the best offer for a given particular case because in supracondylar non-union, there are varieties of presentation. And the goal of our treatment for fracture, fixation and revision surgery are all decided. But on the goal, what is the goal as we counsel the patient, then certain changes we have to make in the constructs. So obviously we would always like to achieve a good natural healing as, as best as possible. But when restoring the limb function to the extent possible, especially if patient has gross stiffness and if patient has gross shortening, these two things need to be discussed with patient because if you want to lengthen a limb, particularly the stiffness would increase. So this is what needs to be decided preoperatively when you make a plan. And obviously, we would like to make the shortest possible time a non-union to heal. And in so many times, we would say that leave apart one or two centimeter shortening. We may not consider that. Heal first so that you rapidly go back to your job and then think about anything. Without compromising the safety is also very important because you want to unnecessarily lengthen a thing and then have a problem. I think that also is not good. So... Certain things get decided by the clinical examination and the way patient presents and what are his aspirations. Many non-unions, when you try to tackle them, are actually either an inadequate biological response or a very suboptimal fracture reduction. So when a very suboptimal fracture reduction is there and patient comes early, I think it is always better to pick these patients early and then revise them early rather than letting them go through a whole cycle of a complete established non-union. In, um, in the nascent stage, if we pick them up, I think it is better to revise them early because then they have a better range of motion. Distal non-union. Yes, sir. In particular case, yeah. if you were the operating surgeon, would you have added up a plate right on the spot? Yes, on day one, I would have added this uh, plate. And obviously, to me, uh, the reduction also is not good. The choice of implant was also not good. The size of nail was also not good. So I think this was suboptimum in all the manners. Yeah. All the manners. So I would have added a plate. Definitely, if, if I had selected a nail, intramedullary distal femur, I would have added a plate and given the length. That would have given everything. And as sir suggests, a dual fixation modality would have given everything for this patient. Conduct, sir. Yeah. Conduct, sir. Yeah. Sir, why there is, should be an indication of kneeling in a such an intraarticular with metaphyseal extension? No, this, this patient came to me, sir. Uh, no, no, no. We are discussing the uh, subject. Yeah. So, I don't think that there is any indication of kneeling in this type of uh, cases where already there is a coronal split in the condyle. And uh, anything which you do it, there will be separation unless you open it and assemble the fragment. Yes, and so therefore, I, the, <clears throat> and therefore, the heading is suboptimal fracture reduction and fixation modality. With that, the choice of implant is also wrong. I think. Wrong. So. Yes, I totally agree. I think nothing is right here. And uh, if I can add up to there, yes, sir. We faculty is only responsible for this. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about this intraarticular fracture, reduce them, <clears throat> and put the screws so that it is not in the line of a center of the um, tibia, center of the femur where the nail can be packed and you can make a nail. So I think when they do it, it's a probably a one transverse fracture in the femur, that is a different thing. But such a comminuted fracture, I, I would feel it's, it's not a safe surgery. Yes. So I, I, I think in the current, this was a case in 2003. So in current scenario, I think all of us probably would have taken a distal femur locking plate, a long span, biological mode fixation with a screw density of 0.5. Perfect. I think that is what would have been uh, the best. And then in the follow-up early, if, if there was a delayed healing, then a medial plate. I think that is what I would have decided. Perfect. Perfect. So, so going forward in this distal femur and intercondylar non-union. So I am, I, what I would be emphasizing is 
there are various constructs which are required for different situation. Now okay. this patient came to me referred by orthoplasty surgeon that I am possibly not uh, uh, convinced that I would be giving a good orthoplasty solution to it. I am not an expert in orthoplasty but was referred by orthoplasty surgeon. And, and uh, the problem was this distal femur fragments were absolutely small, fragile. Uh, they were excavated. They had no bone. And if I can take suggestion here, what would be the modality of uh, treatment? Gadi Gone, sir, if, uh, or anyone can just suggest. If uh, it, you had yeah. chosen an arthroplasty. So the, the patient was patient was uh, senior, and he had a knee pain earlier. Yeah. But have chosen an arthroplasty, but in the arthroplasty, probably you will need a tumor prosthesis because you won't be able to reshape the femur. Right. Put a prosthesis on that. Yeah. But can we have a CT picture for this? So I think C CT would be throwing much light about it. Yeah, but then um, CT was there, but I have not kept it into presentation. Okay. Anyway, sir, there. but then, so since, then since it was, uh, so replacing distal end femur with a tumor prosthesis would be a better option. Would have been a better option. But, but here, it is, he appears to be young because there is no arthritic prosthesis. There is a distal no, femur, no, they, femur, they, they, which, is yeah. femur which is there. Yeah. So I am sure. So the clinical so picture. So this was actually a patient who was around 70 years female, uh, osteoporosis. And when we explored the distal femur was just like a coconut shell with, with a very small bone. So hardly we were not able to pass any screw. And the place where some bone was there, uh, that was posterior, which would have gone behind the posterior aspect of the plate. And this uh, case also is around 15 years back uh, presentation where uh, uh, implant suitable for this situation was not there. Um, so, I, I think I will be having an x-ray of that patient. Just, yeah, yeah. So what did you do? Yeah, I, I'll have a, a, a couple of slides more down. I think it is there. Okay, sorry, there. Sorry. Yeah. So, so what I'm uh, trying to <clears throat> postulate and present here is different uh, dif uh, types of supracondylar or non-union. One uh, cookbook is not available. You have to plan what is needed for that particular. So yeah. plan in this case, plan in this case. So here problem is articular combination, very strong deforming forces, very short articular segment, osteoporosis and bone loss. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, here the situation is much better where you know the mechanical forces have given way. The choice of implant is not good. And, and here correcting this non-union possibly is much easier than uh, the previous non-union. And, and here, Doctor, yeah, please go ahead. This situation which occurs here, it is mm -hmm. because of the doing a open surgery. Suppose this surgery would have been done with a long plate and with a MIPU technique bypassing the fracture zone. Yes. Now given a better result than this, this is, I think, an open reduction and fixation by plate. Yes. And uh, probably the post-operative X-ray must be very excellent. But that uh, that uh, vascular uh, problem as well as mechanical problem has contributed to this type of picture. Yes, agreed. And and uh, just remember, this presentation was prepared in 2003, so it's a long back presentation. At that time. So this also gives glimpses of fixation in that era. And as you can see, DCS um, is the implant, which nowadays almost has been given up. So the problems of that implant, we can know. And in that days, uh, the long spanning was not considered very important. So you can feel the era choices. Of course, here it has gone. The medial pillar was not reconstructed. And as today's philosophy, we all know that long span, less crew density, uh, elastic mode of fixation, relative stability, I would have all done that. Again, this is a reflected case. So this was there. So now the choice of implant for all these three cases, for this patient is different, for the previous patient it is different. So you have to think upon what would be the best modality of fixation. Now think on this non-union. The point of presentation in this case I am uh, elaborating is 
for every distal femur non-union, you need to think about implant. What would give you the best fixation and in this situation? So occasionally an implant and a supracondylar non-union is detected after an implant is removed as happened in this patient. So this patient, the surgeon thought everything has healed up and he removed the implant and patient kept around 12 days after the implant removal with a, with a dehiscence of the fracture. So a CT evaluation of non-union in certain situation where an oblique plane of non-union is there and you are not able to get a fracture plane or a fracture geometry or a non-union geometry, then CT at times is useful, though always uh, CT may not show you what you actually want. But in a, in a selected non-union, I do... Uh, sir, Chandak, sir. Yeah, please go. Go back. The placement of the nail you see here, the supracondylar nail in lateral position, you will find there is a reversal of the curve of the nail. He has done it and it is totally a wrong thing what he has done. Yes. Not because of the nailing. Actually, per se, he doesn't know how to do the nailing also yes. and how to use the curve also. Yes. So, he, he has used it in the reverse fashion. Uh, reverse fashion. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 like so, so suboptimal fixation is one of the main uh, causes of non-union in a distal femur. Many times, you'll find the op, uh, optimum fixation itself was not there. So, I know uh, that case who has done it. <laughs> Fine. For, for some non-unions, plate fixation is required to pro, uh, provide compression at the non-union side. For, for this non-union, if you just try to do bone grafting or just try to replace and compress and then again lock the nail would not be the best solution. Here you need compression or you may use a double implant or you completely change the implant. So, in every non-union distal femur, what would be your choice, sir, here? If, if it, the intra-distal intra, uh, femur nail is there, was blocked and has a non-union. So, of the various choices available, removing the implant, compressing the fracture. So, that was one non-union which we revised with the angle blade plate. I'm just losing this screen. So, a LCP and a non-union, a distal femur nail and a non-union, a lateral lock plate and a non-union, angle blade plate, in all of these situations, gives a very effective purchase of the distal femur. So, even if there is a lot of bone void, a lot of loosening of the screws, inadequate bone stock, even if you have just 3 to 5 centimeter of the distal femur, uh, angle blade plate is what gives you the best implant to give, keep a hold on to the implant, give a absolute stability. So this device, we must all develop good confidence into in a distal femur non-union division. And obviously, uh, a double implant construct also gives a very useful construct as sir suggests many times for junctional fracture. That was a uh, uh, nail with an augmentation plate. Now, there was Conduct one question. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Please, please go ahead. For, this for is for putting an angle blade plate, yeah. you need to have a good distal segment, but unless yes. you are able to put a blade and the screw above. So, this much? Yeah, Three this, to much five minimum. Minimum. this much minimum. minimum. Yes, this yeah. is what we need. Otherwise, very low distal end femurs yeah, this may not be an uh, efficient yeah. implant. That's yeah, the definitely. only thing which I wanted and, to and, add. And like, like in this patient, I was not able to consider that. For this yeah. patient, I was not able to consider that because there is no bone stock where an angle blade plate would give stability, and there was nothing to hold. So uh, I think that minimum three to five centimeter is what we need in angle blade plate. Yeah, this is where we were. Only use of distal femur non-union, very selectively we can treat a retrograde intermediate with a retrograde intermediary nail. Uh, especially when the alignment is acceptable, there is comminution and you are possibly trying to do a bone graft and add a small plate. That is where I would retain it and continue. Otherwise, I will remove the implant and completely revise it. So, 
different strategies can be added depending on the situation, the alignment, the contact at the fracture site, decide on all these factors. For some non-union, uh, if, if the fixation is quite fine, so this was a quite delayed non-union and plate was holding well, the bone contact here was good. So there are two, three choices here. So here, if you add a medial plate is one, or you add a locking construct, you add a 3.5 construct, a buttress plate, whatever you add early before the plate breaks would give a very comfortable result. Whatever you want to do, do it early. So that before the fatigue fracture of the metal happens or it goes into a frank non-union with an implant failure. The dual fixation in distal femur has always worked uh, in many hands. It's, it provides stability to both the columns. It is very effective and uh, it, it, it should be employed early before uh, implant goes for a fatigue. Four things it does. It gives a biomechanical stability, a faster healing. The patient develops confidence in healing. And then you can restitute early moment and then prevents virus also. So all these properties has brought in dual plate and a medial early plate fixation into being. And almost all of us are now using a dual plate fixation for a distal femur non-union when indicated. Uh, this uh, we had discussed 95 degree angle blade plate. As I said, this much distance, Deshmandesa just pointed out, this much is minimum where an oblique screw can also go and then you can um, use that. Elizaro, very rarely nowadays, I don't think last 10, 15 years, uh, we have used Elizaro for a distal femur non-union. Even if infection is there with a masculine technique and a cement spacer with a lot of good antibiotic illusion, uh, the internal constructs are better now. Um, any, any questions uh, so far? Or I would just point out certain important facts about distal femur and all of us can uh, just discuss all these things. The profile of femur is here actually. So this end-on view gives a very nice idea where you need to put your plate. So think of it so that your plate from the lateral side, always remember the lateral femoral condyle in a lateral view is higher. So as you can see and all of us know this fact, but I am emphasizing that so that in the lateral image, what we see on a C-arm, we know where the plate has to be and it is tilted this much. And this is where the plate should fit so that the posterior screw does not go into the sulcus and the anterior screw is not beyond this point so that we are into this safe zone. This is our zone where we want to fix the implant. And this also picture is a very important picture so that we don't interfere into the um, posterior uh, sulcus. So plate fixation has to be very specific. And if your plate is not beyond the posterior profile of femur, then you are quite safe. When you plan your plate, also ponder on this image that your LCP distal femur is going to occupy this place. Possibly this most of the Indian patient, it is almost touching the posterior border. So your anterior intercondylar compression screw is very anterior. If in this hollow you can add one screw, usually I would add only 3.5 mm screw here because this bone is a dense bone and it takes up well. And one possible screw either posteriorly or one or two KYs posteriorly. So this is what usual philosophy is. So what you can do, plan your screws before you plan a plate. So I will keep a plate mentally here or just put the plate there and see where your intercondylar screw wants to go. Uh, the guidelines for an angle blade plate. So you decide the entry point. Take the width of femur. This would be your center point. So your angle blade plate should not, would be in this position. So angle blade plate, you can't, trajectory cannot be helicoptering either anteriorly or posteriorly. So this is the trapezoidal entry. This is the anterior weight. And from the lateral side, if you are putting your angle blade plate, plan it out mentally. So these are the guidelines where you take the first guide wire, keep it centered to the angle blade plate, create the entry point with the chisel. 
the sitting chisel and then put your plate. This is the insertion uh, of the seating chisel parallel to the joint line. The blade can be inserted more distally than the DCS in those days. So this is up to what point the angle blade plate. You have a margin of almost 1.5 to 2 centimeter. If the previous patient has a poor bone stock in a particular hole of a screw. So this is where you can use. And these are the steps. The steps are very clearly defined here. So put your sitting chisel and this is one of the very good device for a distal femur non-union and gives three important things, good absolute stability, uh, ability to compress at a transverse fracture and, and rock solid fixation and also ability to fix the distal fragment also. So this is what I wanted to present in this case, um, in this presentation. Any questions, uh, we can take them up. By any chance, yes, sir. Did you treat that patient which we talked about a uh, tumor prosthesis? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I I think I, that was treated only with multiple uh, multi-directional, multi-axial KY. That was the only implant which was going for that patient, and that patient healed uh, very nicely with uh, KY. The the image I am I think I have in this presentation itself. Element. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show. Two or three more important clinical points. When you uh, treat a distal femur non-union, most of the time limb remains in external rotation. And then the assistant tries to keep the limb rotated neutral and you may create an internal rotation deformity. Yeah. Yes, any questions to Dr. Yeah. Chandok? I show this case. Yes, sir. sir uh, are you finished the presentation? I'll, I'll do after this. Let us see, sir's presentation. Any, any, if you have to, please carry on. Please carry on. Yeah, yeah. I'm Just, sorry. Yeah, no, no, sorry. one or two. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just presenting two or four. Just I, some. You, you'll have to yeah. share again. Yeah. Sir, meanwhile, Dr. Chandak. Yeah. Chandak, sir, I just wanted to know. As you, one of the sentences you said that patient develop the confidence of healing, what it means? So what, what it means is you fix the fracture okay. and then, then when the fixation is rigid and absolute stability has been given. So many patients are shaky when you want them to mobilize fast. So they do not mobilize when they have to clean or the fixation is either inadequate or the fixation is not double column. So whenever the fixation is double column, what I have noted it, they, they comply with all our instructions. They would be able to do a good range of motion. They will be able to weight bear better. They are ambulating better and their pain perception is less. Their analgesic requirement is less. That is what I meant, it, that, uh, meant by um, their cooperation is better and they feel that yes, you are treating them adequately. Immediately they develop confidence as soon as you provide a medial column in a Say at, for example, distal femur non uh, fracture fixation is there. He mm -hmm. is very painful, not able to mobilize. Mm -hmm. And at three weeks, four weeks, you provide a medial column. The medial column gets stabilized. Immediately, the patient develops confidence in you that yes, now I am able to walk and I'm much better and I'm able to, they do many patients when you start mobilizing, they, their limb shivers like this. Their muscle confidence is still not developed. And that oh. disappears. That is what I meant for by that sentence. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you recommend the primary fixation with the dual plates? Uh, the situation, uh, you cannot always say that every time dual plate because it is more of dissection and vascularity also is at stake. There is a lot of soft tissue dissection primarily. So what I would do, I would fix up, uh, get all the soft tissue optimized and then provide a dual fixation. Early, if there is contact loss, if there is an oblique plane, oblique fracture line, if there is bone combination, then I may add it up early, as early as four to six weeks down the line, as soon as oh. the soft tissues are okay. But not not always primarily. I think that is uh, overkill. Oh. Occasionally, overkill is good. Uh, in a particular situation, you can do it. There is no harm. But but I would mm -hmm. always optimize. A good tissue healing is more important to me than, than or more addition of a metallurgy. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So this is uh, only four or five points I just wanted to maintain. That keeping this uh, a small block beneath the hip is always good. So as you see the loom, all limbs may not be externally rotated. Some limbs tend to be like this. And some limbs, especially the long limbs are neutral. But short limbs are like this. So whenever it is like this, keep a small bump beneath the hip. That keeps the limb in neutral rotation. It makes it easier. Your placement of implant also is better. Also, I like to use a inflatable silicone tunic. So that remains in the field and you can extend your incision and also gives a bloodless feel. So one must have uh, all silicone tunic cuff. They are available. They are beautiful and uh, they are autoclavable and they are conical as well. So if there is a conical club, what happens if you apply a tunique and inflate it? This tunique, when it bulges out, it tries to come down. So that does not happen with a conical tunique. So always try to get a good conical tunique. And if someone wants, I can give the company name that is um, either imported stuff, even in India now it is available. So look at the uh, distal femur non-union dissection. So it becomes with a conical tunique as bloodless at this and then you can very nicely see all the tissues. So you can completely carry on. This was a distal femur non-union dissection and then you dissect it out. You can dissect the complete tissues as you want. Take care. Uh, very distally you don't go so that the lateral men meniscus you don't uh, incise. So you, you incise, see the field and this usually vessels are there when you come at uh, the okay. distal femur plate so you can coagulate or ligate this so that they don't uh, so this is the distal perforator and lower down you have the genicular so you can coagulate them so that you don't face unnecessary bleeding and you can always find them every time and I ligate them prior before I go for dissection and then use appropriate length of incision whenever non-union you are dissecting so that we can adequately find out what is happening Previous implants are removed. You can dissect ni nicely. Don't go on complete denuding the anterior muscle plane and the posterior muscle plane. What you need is this plane only. So this certain patients, uh, surgeons, when they revise, their non-union results are very good and certain may have failure. So look at it. If you are having more failures, ponder why non-union revisions, the result is not good. And one of the reasons can be complete devitalization. So keep vitality dissect whatever is necessary. So this zone is what you need in the distal femur. So you don't need to completely anteriorly and posteriorly unless you want to put grafts there. So this is what the dissection was. And, and you can dissect, put angle blade plate and then decorticate as is needed um, with the muscles attached. So that becomes a complete non-union division, removal of implant. And one piece of advice where to put the distal femur fibula if you are using fibula for bone loss and providing the medial column. The angle blade plate, one important advantage is you don't need to provide a medial column stability. You can just use a fibula and insert it. And in this case, I had inserted laterally, but ideally you should insert it onto the medial column. And then, then it becomes quite nice. So this is just a couple of same fixations. I had presented this slide previously also. So coming to that place, sir, just wanted, I would show the X-ray and this patient healed, sir, completely because that was the only possible uh, construct possible. I know this doesn't look good in modern day orthopedics, but I think this was around 2000, the first few years of 2000. I had no other locking plate construct available and suitable for that. And, and this patient become completely all right. And she was very marvelous. Good. Marvelous, sir. <laughs> she was very, but, but I, I understand it's not a, construct which I would boast of and not a construct to be propagated. But that was an exceptional situation where I had, I had to use that and and and, and patient was able to mobilize. Uh, one important thing and tip is when we use a multi-directional, multi-axial KYS in certain situation, all the KYS are submerged or they are bent acutely. They are all turned. They are inside the soft tissue. None of them is poking except this KYS which you are seeing here, that was the only K-wire offbeat. But all the K-wires were just adjacent to bone, quite nicely bent. 
So Cadbury bend and none of them, the patient had a good flexion also. And, and she had a perfect non and she was very happy and, and was a very, uh, had an exceptionally good result. Thank super you very much for patient. It was a superb execution. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So you are sharing the screen. I have stopped. You are finished? Yeah, I finished. Any questions to, to Rajendra? Sir, what was the approach for this K-wired uh, distal end femur? So basically, I had gone with both medial as well as lateral dissection. So medial dissection as they put the medial plate and the lateral dissection because it was just a shell of bone. So I had to had a skeletonization with a pottery and then uh, ilex crest bone graft. But the ilex crest bone graft also I was not able to get a good chunk of bone which I could snug inside. And fibula was also not appropriate in that situation. So I had to put cancellous uh, stuff from the ilacus. I had no uh, recourse to uh, uh, bone bank also. So, but then that patient healed completely. Sir, are we going to ankle? Uh -huh. Yeah. Are Mr. we Kimar. going to ankle now? Uh, yeah. Sir, with your kind permission, can I show a couple of cases for lower end fever? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was to show up. Yeah. I'm showing a case discussion. Yes. And you can see my slide, no? Yes, we yeah. can see. Sir. This was a fracture, lower level, lower end of the TBA. And this was the first operation. Anything you can find which is not right three months now. Probably this angulation. So this has not been reduced properly. Otherwise, this was a badly comminuted fibula which he plated it. And he has done the tension band for the medial malleolus. And this is where he has done it. Now three months and six months. Patient has a pain. Any comment? The fracture has not healed and there is an angulation. But uh, there, uh, there is a doubtful union and therefore there is a pain. Uh, more you, you, you haven't seen this case, no? No, I have not seen. You have not seen this case. But then why do you see that radiologically there is no gaps are seen on anything? The radiology hmm. appears to be as if things are improving. No, sir. That is because of the actually radiological illusion. If you see the posterior view of this picture, you will find that there is some problem is there. And whatever the scene anteriorly, that is a woolly callus, which is because of the comminuted fracture they are trying to heal, but there is no complete healing. Whenever there is a pain, that means there is a pain arising from the ankle or at the from the non-union side. Perfect. Perfect. So the, uh, is it bone uh, substitute there? Yeah. Mm. I think this is what it will. This is, you can see, even one year, I inherited patient discomfort on walking. And this is what was the still there is a dense thing which is seen exactly as Dr. Um, Dr. Chandok mentioned. This was the bone substitute here. You yes. The non-union. Pakka non-union and see, this is when I opened up. This is the Indian hydroxy F type, which cast a shadow, which is those shadows which were there are purely because of this hydroxy F type. This is what was the non-union filled with hydroxy F type completely. So I removed the whole hydroxy F type and I defined the non-union. You can see this. Everything had to be emptied out from this. It, it, uh, to remove all of the hydroxyactide was a far bigger job than the everything else. So having done that, now you can see still there is a some amount of hydroxyactide. Uh, here was the medial malleolus which he had treated. So now having removed the whole hydroxyactide, I made a hole in the in the distal tibia.
ream the distal tibia, then ream the, sorry, ream the proximal tibia, then ream the distal tibia, and then I felt this was coming in the way. So this is how I ream the distal tibia. Now the guide wire was passed from proximal to distal. Guide wire and the reamers going on. The reduction has been done by, by this spike and the pusher. Nail has been passed right. You can see right lower down. The reaming was done with the hand reaming. So it, I could reach right lower down there. With the K wire was removed because that was in the way, as you can see. And then when the nail was passed, right in the center, the villa was plated. A joint plate was done. Massive bone graft was done here because everything which was removed. You can see this is on day one. You can see beautifully ankle axis and everything is perfect. And uh, after shingling here, bone grafting was done. This was immediately, this was two months. You can see bone grafting is taking over two months now, four months now. You can see a good bone grafting this. And you can see up to here view, I do this two, two and a half inch of shingling there. So all that is now form the bone here. You can see that this was the shingling. This also is forming the bone. Now 13 months, very well healed up. This is 13 months, well healed up now. This is uh, 12, uh, 21 months, good range of movement and everything. And he's walking about and moving about. So the basic thing was, that hydroxyapatite which was there. Now my feeling is, in a primary case, in a metaphysical area, hydroxyapatite may be all right. But in a diaphysical area, hydroxyapatite is not as good. Probably if you have an allograph, it may be a better option. But if you don't have an allograph, then uh, um, autograph may be a better option. So this is what it is. Now here is the other one, 62 year old, four surgeries, nailing, plating, grafting, non-union, walking with non-union for 20 years. No sinus, no common breathing. I treated one of his nearest relatives when she was coming to the hospital. So she says, sir, now, and now she was walking on this. You can see there is a good hypertrophy of the fibula as of that. And she was walking on this. Any thoughts? If you have not seen the case, because you know, I think we have seen each other's cases often enough. If you haven't seen the case, you opine, or otherwise other people who, who like to opine. I have seen the case. Yeah, I have, I have also seen the case. Yeah, that's right. That's why I'm saying because we have, we have been talking about this off and on. Anybody from the audience, anybody like to comment anything? Dr. Deshpande, you have seen this, no? I think I think uh, all the um, surgeons would recommend. Please ask. Uh, please opine, because then only we uh, put forward discussions. Doctor Deshpande, you would like, um, sir, or Doctor Vankari, you wanted to opine. Grab Hello. Yes, Hello. Yeah, yeah. This needs a revision with no, the no. opening opening at the fracture side, refreshing the edges. Reaming of the canal and uh, for the fixation, we can use a nail as well as the aug augmentation plate with bone grafting. And sir, fibula resection also. Yeah. Fibula cuff resection. At the to fibula that, you need to do that. Sir, is there any pain? Patient is working for 20 years with pain or no? Yeah, some pain, but she is mobile. She walks about. Because as you can see, the fibula is hypertrophic. Yes, yes, sir. But she's not, yeah. she's not absolutely normal. No, 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 no. Here it is. I did this, whatever no, 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 no. Except no. at that stage, I was not doing a double fixation. This was in 2014. Uh, nail was done. Shingling I am, is the one which I feel is the most important part. So the shingling was done here. 
the whole singling is done here. Photograph, nail in dynamic. Oh, I love the patient to walk about. You can see the dynamic board. Minimal translation has occurred. And then the fracture is completely healed up. She has an excellent. So I think it was. Okay. Probably today. I would have added up one more page. Right or wrong, I don't know. Here is the other one. Nailing, creating, grafting, Aliza are now four years after failure. Same thing. Same thing, fibular osteotomy, polar screws, centralization of the nail, shingling, grafting. And the whole thing is ultimately hit up. Sir, in these cases, from where you approach the fracture line? Sorry? From what is the incision site for the opening the fracture? Either medially or uh, laterally? For the tibia will be anterior and the fibula will be a separate incision. Okay. Today I have posted a similar case, sir, but he has a discharging sinus anteriorly and there is a park skin and near about five surgeries has already been done. Probably you must have seen on the group what to do. In that case, uh, it is a very difficult job. You cannot give an incision also. So, in such a case, what to do? I think if you present here, we'll know. I have not seen on the group. You can see here the polar screws have done the job of keeping the nail in the center. All these are the two are polar screws. These two are polar screws. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Carry on. I'll 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 go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so this was a inherited case. Forty-five years old female with a fracture tibia fibula after road traffic accident. Uh, this is the x-ray after the first surgery. And I would just like to get your opinion on what are the holes of, you are seeing there are four or five holes there. And uh, fixation done with a medial tibial locking plate, distal uh, medial. The fibula is not yet fixed. And what problem the surgeon must have faced. Any opinion on that? And you can see the ankle axis. And the ankle is in valgus. This is in valgus, yes. Hmm. And so the first, first is, what are the holes? So, I, I don't yeah. know whether... He tried to put a yeah. LCDCP or something on that surface. Or he tried to put a leg here and then he couldn't get it. You can see here, uh -huh. the he tried to put a leg and which ultimately didn't, he did probably could get it, whatever, I don't know. Do you, you have any knowledge, Dr. Chandak? No, actually, I could not contact him also and the notes also did not signify uh, yeah, right. anything, nothing was mentioned in that. Any, any suggestion, how do you treat this? See, all these things we have, we have talked about digital TV as so we are basically now we'll finish distal tibia and we'll go to the ankle afterwards, either today or next time. Yes. So I, I think uh, if if we this, 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 one, this ankle axis, it could have been corrected if the fibula was done properly. Yeah. It was it was straightened out. So yes. then then it would have not gone there. Yes. Agree. Okay. So now. Now next. So this was at six weeks. The patient is was still with the primary surgeon at six weeks. This was the picture. I was he was hoping that it would heal, and this was at twelve weeks. So where gradually valgus continued to progress. So from an initial valgus of around fifteen degrees, he has now progressed to thirty degrees, and as is common experience in OPD. Patients with valgus do walk. Yeah. They are not immediately discomforted. It's only the late 
uh, arthritis which would uh, bring them us to us. So he was not bothered about the valgus, uh, but had pain on walking as he told me uh, when he presented to me. The surgeon kept on seeing that possibly it is healing. And this was the inevitable at around 20 weeks. Now how do you uh, revise this? So distal tibia, ankle in valgus, a broken plate and a fibula which had uh, uh, positioned into a gross valgus with some amount of uh, uh, callus and a lot of callus there. So how would you like to revise this? Anybody, any suggestion? Osteotomia, both fibula as well as the tibia. We have to do osteotomy, regain the length of the fibula, then correct the vulgus of the uh, tibia and probably it will like a wedge graft on the lateral part of the tibia and uh, uh, plating of the fibula, nail and plate combination or you can have another plate for the tibia. This okay. is our picture. Yeah. So, what I thought was when we explored the uh, patient, the plate came out easily without any problems. Then we rim the canal from the fracture site and uh, pass the nail. But when we tried to pass the nail, of course, we were able to put it uh, into the situation. But some amount of rotational instability uh, was there. And we provided a nail and a plate combination. And that is what my preferred combination. If the, if the skin condition is good, a nail and, and a plate combination. And uh, with current generation, this was again uh, long back with the multi axial nails available and a recon nails available, expert TV nail, I would have done differently possibly. So that was managed with a plate combination. What I would like to emphasize here is beneath the plate, I usually like to put a small corticocancellous chip of bone to increase the girth at the fracture site so that after the implant removal, uh, less chance of. Uh, <coughs> Stress Sandak right. sir, Sandak yes. sir. Yeah. Uh, I want to get my idea clear here. Actually, you will find that you have used a, a, a axillary medial plate. Yes. And there is a substantial, uh, uh, it's a locking uh, plate and therefore there is it is away from the fracture uh, uh, side. So yeah. what about the skin condition? Because on the medial side in a, such a non-united fracture, Mm -hmm. uh, probably the skin becomes adherent to a soft tissues and there are always some wound healing problem. Yeah. So how do you, is there any problem of uh, wound healing? Uh, in this particular patient, <clears throat> it was not a parchment skin and also initially this patient was in valgus. So when we corrected the valgus, there we had a added skin available. So in this patient, the skin healing was absolutely fantastic and the skin closure was also very good. And therefore oh, we... Oh. Sometimes it is a concern. Sometimes it is a concern. Yes, sometimes it is a concern. In those situations, I think we have an expert tibia nail where we don't have to put anything subcutaneously. So no problem. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Bolo, bolo. Uh, I have a question, sir. Uh, in, in the same x-ray, the prime, if the primary surgeon would have done a uh, plate fixation of the fibula, mm -hmm. so we would have, uh, would have overcome with the, the virus whatever the patient has now. Yes. So, uh, the, but, I, but sir, uh, whether, like, whether the fibula should be fixed first or tibia should be fixed first? So, what, yes. what you can do is, the aim of fibula fixation is to uh, ability to neutralize the ankle valgus and to get a tibia reduction very nicely. So, when you do a fibula reduction, usually that is first. You may put a plate, span it proximal and distal, put two, two screws, complete the fixation of tibia and in case you feel that the fibular fixation has either given way or there is some issue then you can revise that and uh, again lock it back but i would always do a fibula fixation first uh, what nowadays i would do is just get a central axial wire in the fibula it gives the length rotation in this fracture it's a short oblique fracture if it is comminuted obviously you will have to use a fibula uh, use a plate so, uh, Chandak sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Sir. Uh, there is a roll of fibula is a very doubtful thing. Some people, they have the, the mal position 
after fixation of the fibula also does not improve it is basically the fixation of the tibia which is responsible for vulgus rather than the fibula unless it is below near about 5 cm and near the syndesmosis where there is a attachment of the intraosseous membrane at near about 6 to 7 cm is always there is a step so if you fix the fibula of tibia in a proper position of the vulgus probably the fibular fixation is just a complementary thing but recently it is yes Yes. In the lower one third tibia at this level, and in a fibular fixation, it gives you a better stability to the whole construct. I Now, perfectly agree, sir. I perfectly what what I quoted sir. in literature. No, no. What you say is also right. That <clears throat> this fibula being a transverse fracture. Supposing you place the fibula first, then the tibia has a will fall back into the normal anatomy. and then with the axis gene you can really correct it but what you say here is perfectly right that the plate has done the job of putting into valgus even with the plate alone if you had put in this into the neutral position you would have been able to correct this exactly But, exactly what i sir in tibia fibula fractures also we should consider three column concept like fibula acts as a lateral column And the Especially. lateral border of the tibia should act as a medial column. Especially, yeah. especially for the lower fourth and lower third. Because in the in the mid shaft, the fracture of the fibula, there you may not do anything. Yes, sir. Lower one third and lower one fourth, particularly the fracture of the fibula is at the same level, and it would be beneficial for the whole construct to be more stable if it is fixed. Gadi Goni sir, one more point. Many a times on a CM print, we are not able to completely appreciate the valgus or varus because it's a short uh, projection. And when we see on a X-ray, we feel no some amount of valgus is remaining. So getting fibular axis correct almost almost ensures that you are going to get a implant into right position in tibia. Is what I believe. We may remove at the end of fixation. You may remove the small flimsy nail if you want to remove. in my experience nailing is the only factor which is responsible for the valgus enter if it is not taken care varus is rarely occurring after nailing in plating you are usually seen and probably you can get away very easily once the valgus occurred in the nail it's very difficult we have to remove it everything and then we have to do the nail okay okay vasudev This is the case, actually. Which case? Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what is this? Actually, this is a very uh, pertinent to the uh, what we discussed uh, now. That uh, ipsilateral fibula and tibia at the same level and the distal fourth. It is not a distal third. Also, it is a distal fourth. That is distal fourth means. it is between the 5 cm from the ankle plafon so you can see here this is called as a most unstable fracture why unstable it's because if you see a configuration of the tibia it is a oblique fracture and there is also a displacement of the fibula that means this fracture is labeled as a unstable fracture because not only the tibia fracture it is obliquely placed anteriorly but there is a displacement of the fibula that means it is a most unstable fracture and there is a associated rupture of the intraosseous membrane and therefore there is a complete translation of the distal tibia on the lateral side and anterior translation now nice. as you as those of you were there i showed you a similar type of two fractures of the tibia Where I showed after the nailing, after the plating, also there was a till the movement was occurring of the fracture. This is this long oblique fracture. These are the ones which are not as stable in nailing as a uh, transverse fracture, which is okay. I'll proceed. So what I did is actually this is the soft tissue injury, and my philosophy is 
if you want to do a surgery in a distal tibia as in the proximal tibia you must wait for some time it is the basic dictum whether you do a nailing or plating probably nailing can do you earlier but plating one must wait so without article uh, this uh, fracture you can do a plating and you can do a nailing also so it depends on the how you do it there is no issue that whether you do a plating or nailing but it must be a stable construct in a distal tibial fracture so next yes, sir so now you can see here this is how it is done when i came in picture no infection but a deformed angle and you can see here this was the nailing was done by one of the surgeon and you can see there is a still translation of the tibia there is a medial spike here you can see there is a valgus up near about i think it is i have already calculated and you can see the thing is uh, this fibula is shortened and it has now united into the valgus the so probably this patient has a valgus deformity plus there is a there is a shortening of the limb up near about a half centimeter or so and translation on the lateral side patient the fracture is healing if you keep it like that it will heal but patient will have a permanent life long deformity because of the valgus knee and setting early ankle arthritis because of the whole balance of your limb has gone laterally and such deformity is not tolerated by the patient and in that case whether to intervene or leave it like that uh, that is a question to me i think it should be corrected as early as possible without going into the or waiting for the further uh, time so this is how much chandak sir what do you want yes <laughs> definitely i would like to go in early <clears throat> and revise it it is already from first x ray to this it is 5 months already yeah but even now it can be revised yeah i think you should leave this because he has a long way to go he is only 40 year old <clears throat> ankle is in valgus yeah and as as dr gadi ko ne mention this fracture is i think it has already held up but still this is not acceptable so now typical gadi ko ne style he has done this so <laughs> so what i did a removal of distal locking bolt posterior lateral incision for the fibula so i uh, osteoclasis was done then i regained the length keeping the tibia first there screws are removed so that it should not become stable so i regained the length by posterior lateral incision of fibula because i was worried about this uh, skin so there was not a, i did not apply a single incision but this is a double incision and then i did a postibular plating next yes. so what i did you can see here how regained the length of the fibula and then what i did i tried to centralize the nail i tried to centralize the nail by putting two polar pins so that from the distal fragment as well as the proximal fragment sorry gari ko hmm. yes sir nail is in the center you try to correct this deformity yes sir yes sir try to correct the deformity by close method and you can see i try to translate the distal fragment by putting this here you can see here this is the proximal pin translating the proximal fragment and then centralizing the nail in the distal fragment so you can see and you can appreciate this thing that there is some correction is there still there is a you can see here you can appreciate that there is a translation has been corrected this has been corrected and then what i did i translated even the nail also you can see here the translation of the nail is done by a polar pin so that we put a plural pin slowly slowly try to uh, try to hit the nail and then try to correct the by putting the second pin here so this is how it is i done it there is a seal stump translation but i have augmented by polar screw on the medial side 
you can see here and one on the lateral side so that there is no movement at the fracture side and the nail junction distally i put near about three or four screw i think so and this is how the by close rim technique without opening the fracture i tried to do this is the nailing and you can see here this is the post operative x ray and this is fracture i think uh, i have is x ray and perfectly healed up i can uh, show the x ray also it is available with me and this is how it is you can see the restoration of the axis in both and this was a very small incision through which i did the osteoclasis and uh, here this is how it is and problem this fracture has completely so mal alignment is associated with unstabilized fibular fracture that occur at the same level we recommend stabilization of all same level fibular fracture by nail or plate my preferred implant is a nail when i use in the transverse or in a oblique fracture but in a comminuted fracture it has to be a plating is the ideal size nail should not be used otherwise and you can see how the polar screws can be used this is how it is so this is the same principally i used it here so that you can centralize the nail you can use a unil one planer uh, this polar screw or you can use a two planer polar screw so that your nail should centralize in a proper position so polar screws are very very important to reduce your vulgus deformity and the very simple rule of putting the polar screw whenever there is a deformity deforming force that uh, side you have to put the polar screw so you can see here the angle is here on the lateral side therefore you use on the lateral side first and then to the medial side so you can see here how the blocking screws are there and this is a very simple uh, actually when you do it on lateral side the nail will translate on the medial side when you do it on the medial side the nail will translate on the lateral mm -hmm. side thereby you are achieving a perfect anatomical position and then you do a distal locking by one or two screws and two one or two additional polar screw gives a very very absolute stability and uh, there is a movement of the distal fragment they are nullified so whereas deformity proximal for vulgus deformity <coughs> distal so this is how it is it's a very simple principle and it is very well described in the textbook also so thank you very much thank you also dr dr sangeet are you there yes sir would you like to present anything no no nothing the comment on this his case Yes, yes, yes. If you allow. Yes, why what? Allow what, sir? It's all yours. You are, you are free to talk, sir. <clears throat> the polar screw works only in a virgin case, in a non-union, or where there is already a tract of the nail. It is, it is useless to use a polar screw in that situation. In your case, the last case, what you have shown. you still have not achieved a normal uh, uh, correction there is still some shortening there is still some rotation of the distal fragment and that all could have been taken care by adding a stronger implant not a polar screw but a buttress plate on the uh, lateral side anterolateral side i perfectly agree with you sir second there was a question uh, <clears throat> whether uh, whether that fibular plate aids your reduction unless in a pylon fracture or even distal fourth tibial fracture unless you are sure that you are able to achieve a anatomical reduction of the fibula then only you must use a plate first and then put a nail in the tibia otherwise you will end up in a angular deformity when you nail these types of tibia because you are married to a particular direction if the fibula is fixed in mal rotation if it is fixed with a shortening if it is not fixed properly then you end up fixing the tibia exactly the same way what your what is your suggestion so 
uh, yes doctor asim negi no, no, no. please i will endorse your what i do please carry on yeah so uh, that is helpful fixing the fibula is helpful only when you are sure you have achieved the anatomical reduction of the fibula at that level if there is a comminution if you are not sure of the correction then go ahead with fixing the tibia either with a nail or plate i fix my tibia first what what it means is a transverse fracture where you can de establish the axis of the fibula and the length of the fibula you plate the fibula first and the tibia will get reduced so it will much easier to reduce the tibia but in a comminuted fracture you fix up the fibula first and if there is any error you will never be able to get the tibia reduced properly so in a comminuted fracture fix up the tibia first and it will be much easier in a comminuted fracture by really arranging the distal fragment so that the nail goes right in the center and then fix up the fibula in a comminuted fracture whatever they are like into the proximally and distal yes that's it i do my tibia first i achieve a perfect reduction my guide wire is center center and i try to err on one degree of varus rather than ending up with a valgus because the commonest error is to end up with valgus deformity is really very difficult to reduce over reduce in varus yeah so the guide wire is really hammered sub articular as you have shown repeatedly that you can go really bank subchondral and is anchored there and i am the one who is holding the reduction somebody as assistant is rimi and he is passing the nail my job is to hold the reduction and check it again and again sangeet yes sir what is the role of fibular fixation in your practice do you do it regularly or is <laughs> optional if it is a lower fourth if it is a lower third always always i fix the fibula because three screws are not enough it fibula fixation as i said adds up the distal tibia i think i to me it is absolutely mandatory but probably, probably dr garigone does not agree no 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 i agree with you i always fix the fibula but what literature was telling inside the whether fibula fixation does really it helps in the reduction of mal alignment the literature says that fibula yes or no it is very difficult to comment and there are pros and cons of uh, using this fibular fixation in unstable fracture that's what i want to say but yeah. i always fix the fibula in my practice yes doctor uh, dr chandog you raise your hand yeah uh, <clears throat> sangeet can you specify your uh, say guide wire you have put and then sequence of reading sequence of reading reading how do you rim that uh, over a guide wire can i just I, I, on dr vasudev's case yeah he did it so beautifully but as you as dr sangeet mentioned not a 100% reduction but a functional reduction he so, put up the fracture and fixed up the fracture with the clamp nail and everything would have been done the job and a small plate would have got you a 100% reduction and fixation sir ye je amir khana pa to bidi but i appreciate vasudev Sir, so those ways, the way beautifully you have been able to get the whole thing going. Sir, Sangeet, Sangeet, is a Amir Khana partho bide. No, yeah. the problem Sir. with Doctor Gadi Khone is he radiates himself from top to bottom. <laughs> sir, sir, I have a question at this junction to all of you rather. Sometimes fixation of fibula hinders in achieving reduction of tibia. Absolutely agreed. If you are not fixed up the fibula properly, hmm. you will be you will be really really struggling for the tibia. And if I can quote here, in a pilon fracture, it was recommended that you fix up the fibula as a primary thing and do the X fix. And then then when the surgeon goes back to fix up the pilon, it is also recommended that you remove the fibula plate. Except the pilon in anatomical position, and put the fibula plate back again, may not be in the same holes, but it it will be always into the different holes. Different different holes. 
So what you say is 100% right. But in a transverse fracture, if you can get the curvature and the 360 degree of opposition of the fibula, then very likely you will have the tibia falling back in the normal position. Yeah. That's only a one small subset. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yes. yes. We and I appreciate your enthusiasm. Very good. Uh, you anybody wants to show a case? I'll show a case otherwise. I'm threatening. Sir, may I show a case of lower end femur? Of course, of course. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, as Asim sir has said, uh, uh, Sangeet sir said it is always better to fix uh, distal third or distal for fibula fracture. Yeah. So, it is only in the associated with distal tibia, or if it is only mid soft tibia, then also need to be fixed. If it is a displaced fibula, isolated. Mm -hmm. No, not sir. If it is associated with mid soft tibia fracture with distal fibula. No. No. As we said earlier, also, mid shaft tibia does not need a fibula fixation. Lower end, lower, end fibula and lower end of the tibia, then it needs the fixation. But the fibula, okay. if it is within first four inches of the ankle ankle mortis, then it may mm -hmm. be safer to fix up the fibula also in that setup. Yes, Sangeet, you want to add up something? <laughs> yeah, provided your fracture is not, uh, you know, at the flare. <clears throat> if it is a junctional fracture, what do you mean by mid shaft? Uh, because tibia doesn't have a proper isthmus. Usually the fractures are at the uh, junction or where the medullary canal opens widely. Violence. Right. So, so in that situation where uh, you have a shorter nail, you have used a shorter nail, you are not used, a, how do you improve the stability of the distal fragment is by putting, as Asim has said, putting it in the subchondral bone, adding three screws, preferably in different direction, adding polar screws or adding a plate. So if your nail is short in the mid shaft, nail tibia, <clears throat> and uh, your fracture is such that the tibia flares, in that situation, I would uh, prefer to use a fibular plate to improve the stability. Okay. Now we have got four screws in three different directions in even in the Indian copy of Synthes ETL. And now many companies are giving locking head screws, which are more stable than the old locking bolts. Yeah, see, I think before you people join, I showed two, two distal TBS oblique fracture, where after the nail uh, and after the fibula plating also, some movement was demonstrated. So I put in an accessory plate onto it. Because if in case you don't want to take a charge. So even with these three screws, whether the, the, the thing is that oblique fracture lower one third, it wasn't stable enough. And that, that's the reason I put in the plate and the patient could walk about immediately. And the fracture is healing up. It is slowly healing up. And um, I felt that <laughs> uh, uh, it, it was a highest safety measure which you could take. Because the additional tibia in a nail with three or four screws also is still not 100% stable or is not very good stable all the time. Yes, doctor. Uh, sir, sir, uh, is everybody able to see my screen? Yeah. Some funny, funny implant. <laughs> sir, uh, the dist uh, tibia nailing is not done by me. It was done somewhere in KM Hospital Bombay by somebody. I, I operated the distal end of the femur. The patient was walking. He met with an another accident and he landed up with this. Options. Sir, patient, is, patient is in his 50s. Male patient, very happy. Yes, sir. In his 50s. Okay, very long tumor prosthesis. <laughs> Sir, you have seen a case. Dekha hai. 
नहीं सर आई आई वॉन्ट टू थिंक आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स नॉट थिंकिंग ऑफ अ ट्यूमर प्रोसेस देखो ये देखो ये इफ यू गिव दिस फ्रैक्चर टू चांडक वॉट ही विल रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन फील टूडे एम आई राइट चांडक जी But I think uh, Dr. Deshpande also must have uh, done reconstruction. <laughs> Sir, unfortunately, I was on deathbed during my COVID period, and the patient went away to Bombay again. My my plan. Let me tell you my plan. My plan was to take out the implant mm-hmm. and put two plates and fill the grafts. Put yes. two plates and fill the graft. Whatever range of movement he achieves, I wanted to do reconstruction. But patient went to KM Hospital again. Uh, what did they do was they put a cement spacer. They excised the lower end of the femur. Uh, this rod was between the spacer of the cement, and uh, then I had to do this with one of my colleague. This is a tumor processes. this is a link joint and then he unfortunately after another 3 4 months of walking he died by massive heart attack but that gap which is there in between can you just go back gap yes sir between the distal end of the femur yes and, and the and the prosthesis what is there this one there is uh, there is a spacer uh, from the link company and it is uh, not seen on the x-ray sir this is the prosthesis sir yeah but there is no spacer here yeah there is a spacer when we put it actually this rod which is a hydroxy appetite coated and all which can go in and this is i mean this is the only femoral part of the prosthesis which i have put in okay there is a joint i just wanted to share that some other time sir rest of the cases because it is thank you vm thank you yes sir yes sir and i said with the arthritis with the arthritis being seen there two three operations and knee joint will not have a future so i would have probably advise same thing i said there is an arthritis there i would have gone ahead with the people and you want last fairly so the life of this joint is not more than 10 years sir this link joint so constrained joints used to be believed earlier we had but yeah. not any more because i think here to me the femoral stem was very short the femoral stem could have gone a little higher up little higher up sir actually it should have been a limb salvage prosthesis system sir yeah, exactly. this was a cheaper option that we opted to yeah okay the last case i'll show and with anybody else wants to show any case okay this was the doctor sorry raj bhavan i by this by i should have written he was working in a raj bhavan so he came through X Y Z X Y Z A B C and all. Anyway, four years, five surgeries. Fifty-five year old doctor, no comorbidities. You can see all the remnants of the surgery. No infection. First surgery nailing. Second surgery infection removed. Third surgery plating. Fourth removal and debridement. Fifth debridement of the infection. Now two years, no sinus. no infection walking with support total 4 years after injury skin okay need no no plastic surgery ology you can see the valgus which i think dr garibune was saying this is always you can see the valgus here the fibula here any i don't think any one of you have seen this case probably I could just find it out. Have no. you seen Sangeet? This I have not. I have not seen. No, not not. I, I hardly. I I don't remember to have presented. There were any any thoughts. So the so the weekend of fibula plating and uh, debridement. Ah, uh, sorry. 
refreshing of the fracture and of tibia and nail with plate was born. Okay, I, here it is what I did. 55 year old doctor, no skin, okay, needs no plastic surgery. So I went down, did the fibula plating, did the tibia plating, this is one and two plate, this is day one. One plate and the second plate because I felt one plate it wasn't giving and you can see the one plate was not, it wasn't going because there was a quite a lot of curvature which I had to correct and I had to bend this plate. So ultimately one plate and two plate and this is the fibula plate and I could get the axis of the tibia corrected. This axis of the tibia corrected, this axis, I wasn't sure whether this is inherent or whatever it is because the whole thing if I go back to the, yeah, if you go back here, there was some X, some curvature here and this here, but at this end of the situation, this is how I was, two years post of walking, no pain, small occasional sinus. So this is what ultimately it came to. This ankle was corrected uh, well, and these two plates and the fibula plate and a bone grafting, medial pit did not give a good stability, so added an anterior plate. So I, only the medial plate, I felt should, would have been all right after correction. But that on the table, I wasn't very happy. And I had already entered the phase of a double uh, two implants. So I did this uh, second plate, which you can see is because of the curvature is going away. Now this is what perfect stability only had. Two plates of the tibia, fortunately skin didn't give trouble. and kept the plastics that is done by for the things, whatever needs to be done, anything. Two years still healing judgment is not 100%. Do not want to remove the plate now. Because all with all this hardware, I wasn't sure whether it is healed up, not healed up. And the plate removal, but the skin was all right, except he was feeling that underneath the skin, he could see the some hardware at times. But still, we just carried on two years were there. This is the one, how it was going on. Two years post-op, walking, no pain, small occasional sinus. Sinus was the one which was bothering him. So this is how it is. And later on, I think I removed the plates and everything. Now what happened was the screws were broken. I think I, I will, I will, I will, uh, I'll find over the day that the implant removal may be there. Some screws were broken. So continuously three, four screws I had to remove by hollow meal. And hence I had to leave two or three screws. Because if I thought I'll continue the hollow meal very consecutively, then it may break down again. So I kept three or four screws. Uh, out of those three, four which were there, two screws were removed and two screws were left. I said, we'll take it out after later the time. Fortunately, he has not come and he's phoning me up. And he's perfectly all right. He's not bothered about those two screws. And uh, things have become all right. So I felt this was after, even after a long time, you can still get the healing done, but the aggressiveness is quite a lot. But this part of it, though in the, in the vision is not seen, but in the x-ray it is seen, which I couldn't just correct. Any comments? Sir, why not you use a nail in this place? I felt this is the situation where this is the track of the nail which is there. And as Dr. Yes. Sandra mentioned, in with the day, the big track like this, you will not be able to correct this track going in the different direction. Even if you rim it in this direction, in this direction, I thought you will not be able to do it. So it was easier for me to correct the axis with the plate. So first I corrected the axis. And after correcting the axis, I felt that it is it's probably nail alone will not be able to do it. So I have to do a plate only. So nail and a plate was the original planning, but at one stage I abandoned because of this track which is there, which I love to break down this one and this one which is there. You can see there's a good bone which is there. So I love to break it down. I love to go down, open up the fracture, and from this I have to break it down. From the closed one, I won't be able to break it down. Sir, the fracture was not open? Because I think this is all what ultimately I went through. Sir, the fracture was not open. The refreshing of the edges was not done. The shingling was done. Okay. Shingling was done, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
case I felt that it is not required any. Okay. I thought that it is not. Because that uh, the ages were not sclerotic. No, no. All the sclerosis is all here. Peripherally. Yeah. Sir, you used a compression device to correct this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you would, this will not correct. Yeah. In the old non union it will not correct. Yeah. Okay, friends. Right. Already 10 15. Right. Anybody has any cases now? If at all, only cases. It's for an ankle case. Huh? Ankle case combined postro medial and postro lateral. Somebody was asking. Sina uh, is not here. Okay. Anyway. Chalo, you want to show something? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is the lady, 54 year. Fell down from stairs at home. Fresh fracture. This is how she was. Looks routine. Pretty innocuous fracture. Opposite side also had a fracture based fifth metatarsal which was conserved. This is her CT. If you look at the CT closely and actual view, it is Haraguchi type 2 or Bartonesac Ramel type 3 where the posterior malleolar fracture is going right across almost to the medial border. So, plan was to use a postrolateral approach from the lateral position. You can see the peroni there. This is my FHL which you can peel off with the finger and you are seeing almost the whole of posterior aspect of the tibia here and that's your PITFM here. You will have to ex reflect the perona anteriorly and you will have to expose lateral malleolar fracture from apex to base. Right from this point up to this point, you will have to expose it. Then only you can fit that long spiral correctly. So don't try to do a mini dissection. Reduce the lateral malleolar fracture with clamp and fix it with 1.8 millimeter K wires temporarily. These are the K wires fixing the lateral malleolar fracture. And then you go on to reduce the posterior malleolus with clamp. Check that under image intensifier and temporarily fix posterior malleolar fragment with two millimeter K wires under image intensifier control. They are going bang subchondral, about six millimeter above the articular surface. These these two K wires. This was the picture. You check it in multiple directions. This looked okay. Here you find some unease that is there and this one also is not looking bad but it's not proper probably. So always check your reduction in multiple views at that stage because you can still redo the whole thing very easily. Everything has to be 100% perfect for an intraarticular fracture. So this wasn't accepted. Having come to this point, I felt that there is a rotational mal alignment. My overconfidence came because I was able to see the whole posterior surface through the posterolateral approach. So I felt that I reduced it adequately, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. So in, if you look at the CT in Haraguchi classification, my fracture pattern was something like type two, which is not very common. And in the Bartonesset Ramel type, it was type three. The fracture going right across, as you can see here from here to here. So I use a modified postromedial medial approach, which facilitates better exposure of difficult to reach postromedial fragment and its in instrumentation. So you can go either close to the vessel or you can go medial to the uh, TBL is, uh, between TBL is posterior and F, uh, FDL. So we located the medial part of the fracture there and took a posterior medial approach between tip post and FDL. So, uh, neurovascular bundle was protected by FDL. We rotated the left lower limb internally, incision side mark, 
And now you can see that what seemed like a perfect reduction from the posterior lateral side wasn't that perfect. This small void which you can see there is the rotational element which was left unattended. So I removed my wires which I, I had passed from the lateral side for PMF. Both the wires were remo removed. I reduced it from the medial window and fixed it first on the medial side, posterior medial side. And then the posterior lateral fixation was again checked, temporary fixation, but press the lateral part of the PMF with a 3.5 LCP. This is for the posterior medial part. The fibula is kept reduced with the K wires and the clamp, and then a 2.7 LCP on the fibula. And that's how it went on to heal anatomically. Uh, shorter one, that's three weeks, 15 weeks, and this is now almost two years. Uh, she had a wedding, daughter's wedding after almost three months, so around three to four months, she could dance on this ankle. That was the recovery. I think that's enough. Yeah. Asim, sir. Yes, sir. The medial plate was put through the medial window, the posterior medial yeah. approach? Yeah, that was through the uh, Honestly speaking, with hindsight, I think I should have planned two incisions from the beginning. I was overconfident that I can see the whole fibula with my excellent posterior lateral exposure. I can see from here to here, which is true, but that wasn't enough to take care of that rotational element. It wasn't good enough. So if you put two plates, they cannot dance. <laughs> no, if you don't. <laughs> no, no. She, from the day she came, she was worried whether I'll be able to dance in the wedding or not. Oh, who knows? Okay. A video also, huh? dancing at three, month, three, three and a half months. Here is a similar case. Fibula, medial malleola, posterior malleola. This is a CT. Yeah. This is a CT. Goes from one side to other side. You can see the posterior malleola merges to the medial malleola. This is the typical CT which we Dr. Asim showed. So here is the fracture. So I treated it. I went first. I went and fixed up like normally, whatever was treated. So I treated the posture malleolus first. So I fixed up the posture malleolus. And he fixed up the posture malleolus, went and now treated the medial malleolus. To me, medial malleolus and posture malleolus were two different fractures. So I went first and the foremost is my this through had already entered here. So I made that small. I made it small and I'm trying to put now the medial malleolus. I couldn't reduce the medial malleolus. And then I saw here, this is one continuous piece. This is what I realized it when I couldn't reduce. I couldn't reduce the after posture malleolus was reduced. To me, I thought was perfectly reduced. I couldn't reduce the medial malleolus. So here now, so remove the posterior screw, adjusted the medial malleolus first. With the both medial and lateral wound open, both sides anatomical reduction was done simultaneously. Once it was done simultaneously, then nothing was needed. Two, three screws there. These are the leg screws. And the fibula was a small fracture. So I didn't bother about the fibula. I put only the wires there, as you can see. Fibula was a small fracture. So I didn't do anything. I put in this three and the wire in the fibula. And this is what ultimately I got that full anatomical perfect reduction. So exactly as Asim mentioned, if you have that and you cannot reduce the other fracture, take out the hardware and both of them you reduce simultaneously. Once you remove simultaneously, then you will be able to get perfect reduction all over 360 degrees. Now here, I think uh, there is another presentation where I had taken out from my old reviews where similar fractures were there without knowing I must have treated 30, 40 years back. I think at the moment it is not here some other time. Anybody has any cases similar to this? 
So, Asim sir, may you show that slide showing post-romedial approach article about that slide? Hello? For Tanna yes, sir? Yeah, I was muted. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, may you show that slide in which you are showing that post-romedial approach, uh, articles about that post-romedial approach? Two articles. Uh, like, uh, look, look, what I will do is that I will make a, either a Google link or yes, a can send in the WhatsApp. So you can yes. show. Yeah. The yes, whole sir. people. Yeah. Yes, Sangeet, you are saying yeah. something. Yes, sir. For every described fracture, you have a case with you. For every described fracture, you describe any fracture in the body and you have a case with you. Ready case with you. Treated, fully treated. Sangeet, treated by all the possible means. Blade plate, nail plate, nail plate combination, allograph, by all the means. If you have got six uh, ways of treating that, there will be a patient with every different possibility treated with good outcome. <laughs> you, you, you saw this. We are, we are so fortunate. We are so fortunate to learn it from you, sir. So I think I did that ala mukhi. I told you that. Na? I sent you, I think, in the group. In a... No, I'm sorry. Not I, I did that uh, Dr. Mukhil operation. Then I basically I felt that uh, it was a good surgery. Uh, those two wires like nowadays which we are getting used to, two implants, one DHS and then those endosnate. So those things were passed and I tried to do the same thing what Dr. Mukhil does it. And uh, I think it was at the end of it. Patient is now three days. He's walking about, moving about. Um, probably there is something in that what Muki is doing it. Right or wrong? God, God only knows. I don't know what it is. Sir, I have a question pertaining to that endosnail which you put. Hold on, hold on. That, was, that was put proximally. The fracture is also proximally. I think probably you have entered through the fracture site or maybe just proximal to the fracture site. Had it been had it been really better to enter and put the uh, enders distally and enter into the neck and then put a DHS? The other way. Yeah, so uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Honestly, I only mimicked what Dr. Negi, what, sorry, Dr. Uh, okay. Dr. Mukhi does it. Uh, and uh, all I can say is I succeeded in doing the way he is doing it. Right or wrong? No, no. The case, case x-ray wise, result wise is looking excellent. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, but, you, can you see this? Yeah. The fra fracture was an IT fracture. I think I have showed also the pre-op x-ray. Probably it is here. Yes, sir. Sorry, I can't handle it. Sorry, it seems you don't have to trust on DHS. That's why you put Ender's name. Sorry? It seems you do not have trust on DHS. No, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. I have more <laughs> trust in DHS than a PFN. He's saying you are unfair. You are unfair to DHS. <laughs> <laughs> you which has been loyal to you. Which has been loyal to you for years. Yes, I. I'm saying I'm more fond of DHS than PFN. 
Now here you can see the last screw. See that my struggle, it was hitting those wires. So I had to put it obliquely, anterior posterior or something. So it's a, it's a cortical screw. Honestly, I, I do not know whether uh, what you people are saying, there is something truth in it. Because to me, the DHS did all the job. And probably, if I wasn't in a mood to do ala mukhi, I would have just left that DHS and that's all it was. Sir, sir, how long it took you for, from skin to skin? Approximately. I don't think I come. You know that. I, there is no... There is no... Problem. No, you, no, my, my grudge is about people boasting that it takes only 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, there is a orthoplastic surgeon who says, I take only 17 minutes. I know that uh, in and out patient time is three years for it, uh, three hours for it. Yeah, it is always, me. Eh? Yeah. So uh, uh, people should stop boasting that that it takes only twenty five minutes. It's a meticulous cell. I think see, till the time you do a good job, that's all that it matters. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, in and out time is three hours. Sim yeah. sir, let them yeah. let them boast themselves. <laughs> we don't have any problem. <laughs> but we, we all know how long it takes. Okay, friends. Okay, sir. Thank Good you, night. sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good, Good night. night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. 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 Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. I, Faculty every time. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, sir. Bye. Good night, sir. Thank you.